as we, as we come to the end of uh, to the end of the show what what do you have for barristers out there because like we said earlier you won't be a barrister at 70 okay what can these barristers do to make themselves more relevant in the coffee chain and the coffee process and also more relevant for their lives going ahead okay. i usually meet barristers and i'll tell them you're going to be active for 10 years yes. you know if you stretch it 20 years mm. but you can you know graduate yourself first you've learned barrister basic barrister you know you know add more skills but also advance to maybe quality control because yeah. if you do r or q grading then you can get a job in in a, a, a private farm yeah. or a coffee exporting or a coffee processing farm yeah. that's one plus another thing if you're a barrister who has a background in agriculture you can work backwards you know f switching back to your profession yeah it's going to be good if you applied for a job let's say quality control and you're a barrister you have studied r or q mm. and you also know some coffee agronomy yeah. definitely they will take you yeah also you're going to be better than someone who is who has studied quality control but is not a barrister because you know every every employee wants a bigger packet yeah. of you at <laughs> the same price yeah. so <laughs> so the thing is if you're a barrister you're 40 years you overstretched maybe 40 45 yeah. this land q or r ucd has free you know these are free courses mm. i'm not speaking for ucd but they are free r and q grading they are free you you stand a chance to get a job in the coffee industry yeah. in growing or processing farm but another thing we we have some some people we are with who have a background in agriculture or biotechnology <laughs> It is time for the coffee break. A very good morning wherever you're watching us from. How are you doing? Has been your week? Monday to Friday is always a stressing time. You know, like you wake up on a Monday and you're like, oh God, I have a whole week waiting for me. But on a Saturday like this and uh, a morning like this at uh, an hour of 11 a.m., we always got you covered. We give you a break and talk about coffee. Get to know things that you might have done during the week and your uh, weekend is covered so my name is Amoni Mukisa and welcome to the coffee break uh, show this is House of Talent television and we're streaming live on our YouTube channel that's at House of Talent Uganda but on, also catch the show on Facebook as House of Talent uh, television Uganda but on Twitter you know you can go over there and follow our Twitter handle that's at HTV1 Uganda we shall be streaming live every show from our studios right here in Ibukoto and uh, yeah we get to talk about coffee we have a variety of shows but today it's time for coffee welcome once again on the show today i have a guest uh we're going to be talking about various things we're going to be talking about a little bit of like you know how the coffee houses are going to open up the economy is fully opening up literally like next week uh, it's going to fully open up and now we want to look at it in that aspect of like uh, how are the coffee houses ready and how are they going to cope up with the uh, extended hours of working but also on the side of the baristas are they ready uh, to tackle or take on this mantle of working for more extensive hours because most of the baristas you never know during this time of work how uh, they got more things to do um, because they used to work less hours but that's the conversation we shall be having today with my guest today but before we get into all that welcome my guest today on the show thank you so much welcome man Thank Who you, are we having here today? Yeah, I'm called uh, Apaga Samuel, mm. and uh, I'm Ugandan by nationality, a barista by profession, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I like the confidence, man. <laughs> That's 2022, eh? That's the way to go, eh? Yeah. Uh, it's Samuel. Yes. Sir. Samuel, how have you been? I've been good. How are you finding the new year? The new year hasn't been that bad, mm. uh, just because I resigned from my former workplace to move on with something new as I prepare for something better. You know, always when people resign eh, mm. from their former workplaces, they always have something big coming. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, have exactly. something big that's coming? 
Yeah, there's something big I'm expecting. You know, whenever Boris has resigned, me, I always think about like, you know, pushing out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not something big you're talking about, right? Eh? <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about coffee because this is the coffee break. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you get into the coffee industry and how did you get to know about coffee? Uh, actually, uh, I got to know about coffee through a brother. Mm -hmm. I was in uh, Form 6, then I was actually, we're getting to a vacation. Then uh, a brother talked to me, was like, Sam, you're soon having a vacation and it's a bit long. It, uh, you know, eight months when you're home. Yeah. Then he was like, maybe you can come, I connect you to someone. You, you, you get to know about coffee mm -hmm. because, you know, you, you take it as a profession. Then uh, there's some good money, you'll earn some good money. So uh, the vacation, you were talking about like the senior four vacation, no, senior six vacation? Senior six vacation. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I got home, uh, my parents contributed some money. Then I joined the uh, barista school. Uh, Madam Nyakaisike mm. was uh, the we teacher. Nyakaisike and uh, Nyapende Sarifai. Which school was that? Barista House. Barista House. Yeah. I like the names, Barista mm. House. Like, yeah. literally, it's only for baristas, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, when I joined, uh, I studied for one and a half month. Mm. Then, from there, she got me a job at Zikofi Cafe, Chiwatule. Then, I started working as a head barista. Wow. Yeah. One and a half months, one you've and studied, a and now you're working as a head barista yeah. in a certain place. Yeah. Ah, man, that was quite something because people do work for mm. quite a while mm. before they become head baristas. You yeah, know, for yeah, someone to right. trust you with their shop, someone to trust you with yeah, their right. coffee and everything to lead it. Mm. It seems like you're really, really good doing your training in one and a half months. Yeah, actually, they train, they equip me with coffee knowledge, mm. you know, both uh, theory and practical. Mm. And uh, she, she sent me to this lady, mm. and this lady trusted me and gave me the opportunity to run the barista section. Mm. During, during your school in that one and a half months, mm. like what were the things you talked about being specific? Because mm -hmm. I know coffee being as a wide thing, it's mm -hmm. a wide uh, concept to cover mm -hmm. when you're talking about coffee. Mm -hmm. So when you tell me like you only took one and a half months to study coffee mm -hmm. or get to know it, it mm -hmm. beats my mind like how did you like <laughs> segment all those things in only one and a half months? What did you do? Actually, uh, it was uh, more of practical. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was uh, all about knowing how to operate a, mm -hmm. an espresso machine. Mm -hmm. Then also the other manual brewing part, mm -hmm. the different manual brewing equipments. Yeah, it was about the coffee machine and the different manual brewing equipment mm -hmm. and how to handle clients. Yeah. Yeah, the service part of it. The service part of it. Okay. Let's go back to where, when you're young, mm. did you grow around like the coffee area, coffee environment for you to get to know coffee? Uh, uh, actually, during uh, my young days mm. i didn't know much about coffee mm. the coffee i knew was picking the red cherries from the coffee plant go and sell a kg at but, 300 shillings <laughs> but did you That's know by then that they are called coffee. red cherries no no, no, no. actually <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> but what did you eat just mwani mwani yuka yeah, yuka used to. Mm. so grand, grandma could send us to go and pick the red cherries mm. we go and sell they could sell uh, we could sell each kg at 300 shillings 300 yeah which year was that if you can remember that was 2012 yeah 2012 29 2010 mm. yeah where was that that was iganga iganga oh you're yeah. from iganga yeah, yeah. you're yeah. even grow coffee yeah. eh? <laughs> <laughs> my mom is um, so gas yeah. is from Iganga. Then my, my dad is from West Nile. You know, Iganga, Mbale, mm. Bududa. Mm. Uh, okay, Karamoja is a bit far, mm. but they also grow a bit of coffee. Yeah. But that area, they grow a lot of coffee. Yeah, yeah, you're So, right. like, your mother was growing coffee, right? Yeah, my grandma. Your grandma. Yeah, my grandma. Uh, like, how were the growing methods of, they used, like, to grow coffee? If you can remember. Uh, if I'm to, re to remember or to recall, mm. actually for us we went when 
it's already grown. It's already know? up. It's already up. Uh. So we're there to pick the cherries. Um. Go sell. We never, we never went through the nursery bed and all that. What, what's, what's one thing that you bought and you can still say, yes, I sold this coffee and I bought this. Uh, actually, I, I remember when we picked the, the ch red cherries. Mm -hmm. We used to chew the r very ripe, ripe coffees, yeah? And we could get this sweet taste mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. Then grandma was like, you people, you're spoiling my coffee, my coffee, yet we need to go and sell and get some money for yeah. sugar. Yeah. You need to pick more coffees, we go sell, get some money for sugar, maybe, and maybe breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why I ask you that question is mm -hmm. because during Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, my young brother, he's aged now 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, so my dad told him, mm. if you want to buy something for yourself on Christmas, yeah. then have this coffee because we had some coffee plantations in our banana plantation somewhere. Yeah, yeah. They're not much. Yeah, just yeah. you know how like you can grow coffee mm. in a banana plantation mm. just for just. And so the, the, that coffee tree had bared a lot of uh, coffee cherries. Mm. So my dad told this guy, you're going to have this that coffee. You sell it and you buy whatever you want. I'm mm. not going to give you any money. That guy went and have this coffee and. What he did, he had, uh, I'm told he got 10 cages mm. and he sold it. He bought a pair of trousers mm. and a t-shirt. Mm. But I tell you that day, he never removed those clothes. So that's why I was like, what is that one thing that you <laughs> bought with the coffee you sold? For us, we yeah. used to sell and, you know, give the money to the grandma. Oh! Yeah, that's what we used to do. We that didn't know much about money. Yeah. So we could go sell. Then this guy could get the money and mm. bring to the grandma. Mm. So we we're hoping that guy, he wasn't giving us this money. Mm. We could give the money to the grandma. Okay. Yeah. Before you went to Barista House as mm. a coffee school, mm. uh, which schools did you go to? And in these schools, did they like talk about coffee? Mm, before, before, I went before to you went to Barista House, house yeah, as yeah. a coffee training yeah. school, yeah. yeah. Mm. Which schools did you attend? Yeah, it was a cheetah and a hill. Oh. You're the rich guys, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I uh, uh, cheat and all uh, from Form 1 to Form 4. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Form 5 and Form 6, I went to Emirates. Uh, dozens of entertainment. Mm. Yeah. The schools you've talked about, they're all in Central. And mm. you told me your grandma was in Iganga. Mm. How do you get to Central? Uh, actually, we were born here. Oh, you are born here? Yeah, we uh -huh. born here. So, during our holidays, we're taken to the um, village, yeah, to go stay with grandma. your grandma, to get to know your grandma uh, very well. The people there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in your high school, mm -hmm. uh, you never had like coffee, coffee clubs and everything because in the previous show mm -hmm. with Michael Karach, mm -hmm. if you haven't watched that show, please go to our YouTube channel that's our Soft Talent Uganda and watch that show. It was a very, very nice show. Michael talked to us about how we got to know coffee, how we mm -hmm. got to, um, uh, to know our oh, introduction into the coffee industry mm, mm. and it was like there were these coffee clubs in school mm. in universities mm. uh, and that's how we got to know coffee were there coffee clubs in your school uh for us uh, we were very very unfortunate we never had any coffee club mm. yeah do you think it's something that maybe schools can consider yeah very very much because mm. it is uh, helping out you to a greater extent mm -hmm. you get youth are gaining much from coffee and uh, coffee is on a wide market mm -hmm. you get uh, when you get to know coffee you won't fail mm -hmm. yeah, to get a job or to get any connection anywhere because in this world of coffee uh, people 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 connect mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. when you when, when you're this good kind of person you won't fail to be connected somewhere me have been connected by several friends I've also connected several people, you get. So there is love, there is uh, this uh, selfish spirit in this coffee world. Okay. So, mm. There is love, there is connection in the coffee uh, sector, and mm. there is love, mm. there is connection on the coffee break. And I hope you've gotten to know who are we are having on the show today. That is Sam. I was still having him on the show, so don't touch your day. We're coming back right after this break. <laughs> 